Watch it rain. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to our planning board. If, if we have time during this, we can call and ask you if you have any uh, questions. If you do, let us know. <laughs> All right, we're going to uh, we'll do the roll call first, please. Yeah. Edward Vignot. Here. Jim King. Here. Mark is at Addison for now. Um, Aaron Chase. Here. Donald Matisse. Here. Gregory Stewart. Here. Betty Harris Howard. Here. Jamie Wolf. We know this is not able to be here this evening. Yeah. Brett McCarthy. Here. And Rick Dory is not able to be present this evening as well. So. Oh, Madam Chair. Yes. If if you could designate the alternate um, this is oh, vote. Thank you. We thank you. We're going to use an alternate tonight because we don't that will make seven and that's our preference to have seven. So you're going to be the alternate for the evening, okay? Yes. And you'll vote and make us all happy by not. <laughs> okay. If you would like, I can give you an overview of this of the status of the mineral extraction ordinance. No. Oh, okay. I'm, re I'm reading two things, and I have two different number ones. Ah, uh, okay. If you do that, that would be great. So, on the agenda this evening is the mineral extraction ordinance, which we've been working on. <clears throat> and at the last meeting, it, the board had indicated that they wanted staff to put together some language, and that would address monitoring the air quality at a local level at a, at a property at a project if it came to the board and unfortunately i was not able to get information together to have something for you to consider this evening so my recommendation is uh, one of two things my recommendation is actually the first which is to table the item to continue the item for the first meeting in march that would give me time to to do that and to notice it as a public hearing because there's legal noticing requirements and there would be substantive new information so it would require it to be noticed um, the second option is to decide to conclude the discussion around the item and forward it to the council as is. Okay, we're open to discussion for the board. Questions? Comments? Yes, no, maybe? Well, what was that last? You're going to so, talk about the air testing Later, or? Yes, that's that's my recommendation because you were very clear that's what you wanted, but right. time-wise, I just wasn't able to provide that. But we would send everything else to the council? Two options. One would be to send everything as is, which would not include local air monitoring, or continue this discussion until the March 13th, 13th meeting, and then I would provide you information so it could be discussed at the March 13th meeting, so it would not go to the council this evening. So it would go to the council as is, or continue it so you can. If it goes as is, do we still have the opportunity to do it? You could potentially try to address it later. It would piecemeal it. It would be difficult, especially if you know you have so many other things to look at. Um, you might want to just have continuity and complete it. Yeah, we are we up against the date? The moratorium is going to end. So if we don't push the council, we're going to miss our window. The moratorium ends up with the ninth. However, in the state of Maine, you can um, have retroactive ordinances. So I have the language from the town attorney that to put into the ordinance. And when it goes to the council, they would adopt that language in there and it would cover the gap if an application came in. It wouldn't leave, leave the town open with no regulation if an application came in. So you can apply it retroactively so it would be safe. So that's what we would be doing. If we Correct. Defer to the next meeting. Okay. And I did talk to the town manager um, at length about this, and, and he was supportive of it. He thought the council would probably like to see it come forward all as one. So if you are going to consider putting that in, those pieces in, um, again, that goes with the idea of tabling it. <clears throat> Additionally, I'd like to just also mention that we do have a groundwater protection ordinance, which I wasn't aware of that at one point when you were discussing this with Katie Cobb and where it would apply. 
and it had said in the ordinance at that time in the draft that it would apply to the groundwater protection district and i did not believe we had one so that was coming out so if you decide to table it i'd like to ask the board if you would entertain me putting some language back in to address groundwater since i did find that ordinance and i could make sure that you know cross-reference them and that they still work okay well, we want number one. All right. Number two. You don't want any of them? <laughs> I, would, uh, I would be inclined to uh, support uh, uh, postponing that until the uh, March meeting. Okay. I want me to do that as a motion or? You could. Uh, or, well, see Nobody if seems to want to say Others anything. have any further comments? You've got your hand on the of course. Button. Okay. <laughs> no, if we're not going to run up against the deadline, I think that's reasonable. I mean, there's already uh, existing groundwater requirements in the ordinance that we drafted, so it just needs to be in alignment with our town ordinance and not contradict, which I don't think it does, but but yeah, you probably want to double check to make sure we don't step on our own toes. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's worth probably holding off and making sure that we don't double dip on that as well as uh, dealing with the air monitoring. So I think I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of both no, going to my okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, we can take a vote. Is, uh, number one, postponing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Madam Chair, I just want to make sure if there's a motion made that it would be uh, to March 13th meeting. That's the next meeting. What did I think it's 15th? My day, you know how my day is going. Uh, March 13th, postponed to when? Right, why, why don't I make this an official motion that we? I just want to say one thing. Yeah. Let's let's all, including myself, be ready to do this and get it to the council. Yes. I think it's time. So it's, next time, if yeah. we can get everything done, if we read ahead and all that, and you can call Dawn if you have questions. Um, but let's try and get this linked up. I think the council will be glad to get it and. Kind of put it to bed. You'll get that it was before that meeting, right? Now. Yes, and get it posted to the public. <laughs> there was no update this time, so the, right. the ongoing document wasn't updated because I didn't get a chance to get that in there. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, uh, try it again. Uh, uh, I move that we uh, postpone the uh, mineral extraction ordinance uh, to the March 13th meeting. Second. Um, can you vote? You can vote. I don't know. There's two of them, and I get. Control. You have to vote. Go ahead. Yes, you vote. Okay. Uh, second. Second, third. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Aaron, you're a regular beat uh, member now, right? Yeah. 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 Bon, it took you long enough. <laughs> We're glad to have you. Yeah, yeah. what took you so long? <laughs> Thank you, folks. Hate, hate to break the party. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we'll see you in March. We'll see you in March. Yeah, yeah see you in March. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Pass. All right. Pass. <laughs> Okay, we're going to move on to case 24-01, 95 Woodland Lane, consideration of the request. Can you hear me? Did you pull your microphone I closer? Did, I didn't put it on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, case 24-01, 95 Woodland Lane, consideration of a request for a conditional use permit to expand a legally non-conforming cottage in the shoreline zone. That's for Richard and... Jones and Susan Vaughn, Matt 2005, Okay. As we can look at that, what we're going to do is I will read the different things that are, are in the, that they have to do. And we're going to just say that you know, a question. Is there a presentation from, um, from, from for this? Yeah. Oh, just go ahead. Yeah, 
my name is Elliot Stair. I'm going to present the application for Richard Jones Susan. <clears throat> Rick Jones, owner applicant is here. And I and also up on your screen, I see what I did see. Yeah, Haley's there. Haley, oh, hi, Haley. Haley Bonico, um, Rick's a designer who submitted building and architectural plans. Uh, is here to answer any questions. Um, so this is a proposal to expand the existing legally non-conforming cottage. Um, and the plan I've got on the board here is the same plan that you, or use plan that you've got in package. Um, this is on low and arrows, wood lawn lane. Um, at the bottom of the sheet is the lake front. Um, at, the, at the top is the wood lawn lane. North is in my direction, with in the door in it. Um, the existing cottage is less than 25 feet from high water mark. The proposed positions will both be more than 25 feet. So we're not increasing the non conformity uh, the, the addition on the northern side, the small addition is going to be a closed entrance to get into the main living area, approximately five feet by six feet. Um, frost walls will be placed under that entrance. The rest of the cottage will is on both now. There'll be a full basement put under the existing cottage and under the proposed addition on the south end. So the, the two darkened areas that I show here are the proposed additions. And in between them, just the light cross half is the existing cottage. Um, the subtly addition, which will be living space or bedroom, is gonna be approximately 12 feet by 22. Um, on the front of the existing cottage, um, there's the closed porch, and there's also a deck. Those will be closed in and opened up into the living space of the cottage. Um, as I mentioned, the um, existing cottage, counting the roof overhangs, is as close as 21 feet to high water mark. And these proposed additions are more than 25. I've calculated impervious areas on the lot as it exists, which are along the 2,000 square feet, which equals 10.54% of the lot area. With the proposed additions, the, it'll be increased by a little more than 400 square feet up to 2,573, and that'll be 12.7% of the total lot area. The existing building footprint area is 1,038 square feet. With the proposed additions, it'll total 1,396 square feet. Which is a 20.5% increase, just under 30% allowed at all. There's an existing drilled well, a new drilled well that Rick and Sue just did up in, in this area, just as you turn on to the lot, just below the driveway. Um, there's also a new septic system designed for four bedrooms. This will be three bedrooms, uh, but a little larger than what's going to be needed for the cottage. That has been approved and constructed. And that's, we were able to put that across Woodlawn Lane on another parcel that Rick and Sue own, which is done. Um, Real beneficial to get a gel back from the lake. Total earth moving will be 452 yards, well over the 25 yard limit. We have requiring the conditional use of that. 
in the package that we got. I've got the completed conditional use application and can go off that as needed. Um, I'm authorized by Rick to act as agent. Rick is here tonight, but I I won't have to do that. Um, we've got a copy of the tax map showing the four lots that Rick and Sue own. So the, the cottage lot is the main and largest parcel. They also own a lot to the north, undeveloped. Um, nothing's proposed there. They own a lot directly across from the cottage. Um, we came to the planning board last June and got approval for Rick and Sue to build a garage over here, which is now all framed in and well on its way to completion. Um, and then the fourth lot is the one where the septic field has been constructed just to the southeast. We got a copy of the deed. Um, there's a copy of the flood map in the application. Um, the 100 year flood elevation, I've got it shown on the plan, is at elevation 176, and there's a dash, a heavier dash line you can see along high water mark. Which is the limit of credit year flood. Um, on the flood maps, you may all be familiar, they've got the, the shaded areas on a map. There's, they're not definite limits as far as the elevation goes, but if a building is within the shaded area, by definition, it's in a flood zone, even though we're well above. But what we've done is we apply to FEMA and we submit that the information, the elevations at the ground, both the J2 grade, the floor elevations, that type of thing. And Rick was issued a LOMA, which is a letter of an amendment from FEMA. So it formally takes it out of the flood zone even though elevation-wise it's not because it's in the shaded area, it is. But then when you apply to a home for given the elevation data, it's taken out. Uh, and a copy of that loan is in your application. We've also included the HHE 200 forms for the septic system across the street. Um, and then one item that I don't have in here, um, but John and I, or I received approval from DEP, and I sent it to Don. You may have already received it from DEP. I haven't seen it from them, and there wasn't an attachment, so I'll reach out to you tomorrow and see it. Oh, no, there's not an attachment. Oh, but oh. Just on the second page, it's just noted that it's a premium. That's, okay. that's what they do for that type. So, we'll see. Okay. so because of the proximity to the shore, and also because we're going to have two foundation drains that come toward the lake from the building, um, that needed a, a permit by rule from DEP. So we sent these plans and other information to DEP, and that's now been the feed. Well, that, that's in Don's file. So as far as we're all set. The, the reason we're in those drains going toward the lake, it's two reasons. Number one, with the new basement that's going under the cottage and this the subtly addition, there'll be foundation drains that go all the way around the outside of the new basement. So we need the daylight fill foundation drains that you have to, of course, they slope down gently away from the building, but you've got to come out of the ground with them. And the two outlets I've shown meet the slope requirements that we have to have. 
Um, the second reason we have those is this the existing cottage and also with the new additions. The roof slopes back away from the lake. It's just it's a shed roof. So what we're going to do on the back of the, the cottage, along that entire back wall, we're going to put in uh, roof drip edge infiltration, which I know you're familiar with. So the roof, all the water from the roof of the cottage, including the addition, will run back, uh, drip off the roof, and then go through crushed stone. Um, there's a detail. Um, goes through crushed stone, and then there's a filter sand layer. And then below that, there's crushed stone all the way down to the footing and the foundation drain. So all of the root water from the building goes down through, through the filter, and then it's clean water, and then it comes out to the drain stream. So that's... Uh, been reviewed and approved by DP. I'll go over any questions. Um, as I mentioned, Kaylee Blanco talk about the building. Yeah, and, I can talk about the building if that would be helpful. If that would be wanted. Does anybody have any questions about the building? Yes. Okay. Uh, I do. Um, go ahead. Okay, is it okay if I share my screen? I don't know where your guys' screen is at. It looks like I need um, the host to enable it. It looks like it's disabled for me right now. If I make you a host, that might make you be able to. I'm not certain. I, I can, if you guys have the plans in front of you, I can also just speak through them and, and you guys can follow along. You want to, can you share your screen now? Yes. <clears throat> okay. okay. Hey, so um, on this first page, we just have you know, basic information about the map, the lot, the, the zone, um, the square footage that LA kind of went over. Um, we are adding um, a total of 323 square feet to maximize that 30% allowed addition. And on this next page um, is some site info, just sort of um, placing the site for you guys. So we've got um, here, over here on the left, the tax map identifying where the lot is um, on the tax map, and then zoomed in a little bit more um, here on Google Earth showing the size of that lot um, and sort of the, the amount of greenery that's around it. And the two images below um, are showing, this one's showing an aerial view on the left from the lake, and then zoomed in a little bit further showing um, the face of the house um, or of the cottage from the lake. Can you guys see my my mouse as I'm moving that? Yes. Okay, good to know. Um, I'm gonna jump really quickly to, to this page first. This page probably should have come first um, before the, the site plan, but these are just some existing images of the cottage. So this top left one is that north facade. So this is as, as you enter the cottage from the north. Um, and then this one over here on the right is from the, from the lake. It's sort of that um, northwest view. And then over here on the bottom left is the west facade. And then on the bottom right is the south elevation. And then, so this, this site plan is, um, really identifying that change in overhang or that, that footprint that we're talking about. So over here on the left, um, this darker square is identifying that existing roof, that existing shed roof that's, that's sloping over to the east. And this lighter gray is the existing roof over the porch, over that screen porch. 
And then there's an open area of an open deck that's partially covered by the existing roof. And then there are some steps coming down. And so the proposal really is, is to just cover, as Elliot was saying, we um, our client wants to wants to build in into this deck area. So the proposal really is to bring that roof to cover up that whole area. And then in this map on the right, the darker shaded areas are those additions. So that's so over here on the south, that is a new roof covering a new area. And this red dashed line is showing that setback. So not coming um, beyond that setback, staying behind it um, and staying within that 30% allotment. So there'll be a new addition over here on the south and then um, a small entry area on the north. And then um, this lighter gray area is just showing what's already existing covered, um, only it'll just be enclosed now. Oh yeah, there's a problem. So this is this is showing that existing plan over here on the left. We have the screen porch and the and the existing deck, and then over here on the right, um, that is that is everything that's um, currently fully fully enclosed. Um, and the proposal um, is is to really maximize that area. So as Elliot was saying, we're gonna put a. Um, full foundation under the under the the new addition that's going to be on the south, and and then under the existing cottage, including the screen porch. So all of that will be um, enclosed in a in a basement with a full foundation. And then floor plan wise, um, again the the lighter gray over here on the south is that addition. That's that um, additional footprint, including the overhang. And then on the north side as well, that lighter gray area is showing that um, that new that new footprint that will be covered. Um, we're showing a dash line for that existing roof, so you can see where all of the, those overhang lines are. Um, roof plan. There's probably more information here than you guys need to know, but um, so these are these are the elevations, the proposed elevations. Um, over here on the left is that propo proposed north elevation. So that new entry is, is what we're adding onto that north side as far as square footage goes. Um, on the west side, um, I've drawn a line that goes from, from the bottom of foundation or the you know, where the foundation meets the ground on the downhill side. And the maximum height that we're going um, is 19 feet, 11 inches. We're essentially taking that, that shed roof where it currently lies and extending it to cover that screen porch. And as you extend it, that, that height um, becomes 19, 19 foot, 11 inches. So we're not, we're not necessarily raising the roof, we're just extending it. And, and it just so happens that that, that meets the the maximum requirement. Um, so these last two elevations, this is the, the south elevation showing that, that new addition that's behind the setback. And then this is the, the east elevation on the uphill side where Elliot's talking about the, um, the new drainage that's going to be implemented with the crushed stone. And then, yeah, then we just have your, you know, your basic building sections, but I think this last page kind of shows a good representation of, of what this new structure um, is proposed to look like. So that's, any questions so far? Um, no, I raise a yeah. comment. Yes, who would like to go first? Thank you. Ed can take that one. I, I had it on my mind. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. A um, couple of comments on uh, the sort of the dimension, particularly related to the the height and the expansion. Um, the, the the plan uh, looks very interesting uh, with the goal of staying under twenty feet. The problem with this site is there's uh, the enclosed porch, according to the sketch uh, that Elliot put together, which appreciate a nice, very detailed sketch here, 
So it appears that uh, probably at the furthest point, uh, as much as three feet of the porch is within the 25 foot uh, setback from the water. Now, our ordinance and the state regulations uh, do not permit uh, increase of height in that area be beyond either the uh, current height of what's there or 15 feet, whichever is greater. Um, so uh, the way I read the, or see the proposal for extending that roof line out over that enclosed porch is not feasible because that is, that would definitely be uh, increasing the heights uh, substantially. So um, uh, anything beyond uh, beyond the 25 foot setback, the 20 foot max height does apply. So what's proposed there uh, would not be a problem. Uh, however, uh, extending that roof over the uh, enclosed porch uh, in, in excess of 15 feet or whatever the current height is, it would not be permissible. Uh, one other, and this is splitting hairs a little bit, but uh, I think it's uh, reality and the way I, um, the way I interpret uh, our ordinance and the state regulations. Uh, for the 30% expansion, uh, <clears throat> any portion of the building within within the 25 foot setback from the waterline is ineligible for expansion. So um, I did kind of a just a, a little bit of an estimate again based on LH drawing. It appears that there's approximately 24 square feet or, or thereabouts uh, of the uh, enclosed porch that currently extends uh, beyond the 25 feet. So that would need to be deducted from the floor space eligible for expansion. Uh, so based on that, uh, it appears that you could only expand to a total of um, I figured about 1394, but I, I math this is kind of rough math. But, uh, I think I think the uh, the expansion you're proposing uh, is going to be uh, over 30 percent by a small amount, and uh, uh, so we need to maybe bring that back a little bit. And uh, the uh, the height of the building beyond the uh, uh, Beyond the 25 foot setback uh, uh, is probably more of a serious problem. So I think that uh, we may need to uh, do some alternate plans on this. Yeah. Well, since we're, Ed, Ed already brought those up, but I got a couple more for you. Um, so my first question or comment, I guess, is, uh, you know, you have an existing LOMA, you're adding the foundation, which means you have to submit for a revised LOMA, which is now a LOM C, which is letter map correction. Now that you're adding a foundation, your lag will still be the same. So you'll still get it approved, but you must resubmit just so you're aware of that. Um, I'm aware of okay, once, yeah, once, once the foundation's added, but I wanted to make sure you're aware of that. The second question, um, was kind of about your underdrain. Did you say that your underdrains coming towards the lake, you had to daylight them? Yes. DEP required you to daylight them? No. But on any foundation drain that's below ground, that drain has to outlet to... Well, it doesn't have to. Yes. Ideally, it's, it's good for drainage, yes. But you're also opening it up and you're dragging it all the way to the shoreline basically in order to get that drain so it's going to drain directly into the lake yes so i said i would be a bigger fan of you know what's called a dry pit which is a large drainage pit dug on the corner put stone in and then it has 20 feet to go from that pit and it can only drain through groundwater so it's going to be a lower drain but it still should drain so it's not as ideal but 
I I'm I'm just asking that I I'm I can't believe DEP approved that because you're basically almost drawing a pipe to the lake. I'm shocked that they gave you, but I know permit by rules are super easy to rubber stamp. So I, I get that. But I said from the town, our job is to protect the quality of the water in the lake. And I have a lot of concern about drawing those two drains directly up to the shoreline, basically, and daylight impact which basically means that anything that goes in is not going to go through any filtration. Yes, coming off the roof it does, but any groundwater, any other contaminants that get in are going to go directly into the lake with no ground buffer. And I understand um, what you're saying. Um, the And you did mention that this water is filtered that comes off the roof. It's at least the roof, water. but anything that comes in from the sides or from the side drains is, is not necessarily going to be because it's going to run over to the side of the building. It's going to run down the foundation wall into that perimeter drain and straight into the lake. So you've basically taken out any buffer for that material. And as far as anything running toward the foundation and then down along the foundation too. It shouldn't be a lot because it slopes on both sides, but there's still a there's still an opportunity for it to get in. Well we, so, we avoid that though like whether this anywhere that you build a structure with a basement that goes below ground, number one, you block surface water from going to the foundation and then down through because you're risking a wet basement. Right. Um, you're trying to yes, accept but that's why all basements are waterproof, knowing that whatever you do for hardscaping on the outside is going to fail, right? That's why everybody rubberizes the outside of their foundation. So I understand the hence, philosophy behind the engineering. I'm just saying that since we're talking, you already got to redirect the height. I'm saying I'm going to have an issue with those underdrains. So I'm asking, you know. My, maybe not the whole board, but I know I have a problem with the way those are drawn. I would prefer just a bulk pit um, with a lot of stone in it and allow it to drain through groundwater because it's going to get a natural filtration that way. And I'd say that 95% of the time, something like that would work. But when you do have heavy rains and that... <laughs> Um, dry well or what a, a stone pit that you called it that'll fill up with water yep and so you always want to engineering wise you want to make sure you have a place and you want to drain that water so the again the, what we're proposing is standard I, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. If I'm engineering it, that's what I'm thinking. That's the easy button because you know the basement's not going to get wet. I'm saying from a water quality standpoint, that's not a good design because you're going to be letting that water directly. You, you basically built a pipe with stone directly into the lake, especially when you drink daylight. And I'm sure when the board hears my understanding, they're probably going to side with me saying that's not an ideal design to protect the quality of the water to the lake. And if the, if the property was 100 feet from the lake and you were daylighting the basement and it went over the ground for 75 feet, I wouldn't be as concerned. You're daylighting five feet from the lake. You're essentially making a pipe break to the lake. So that's my concern. So even though there's, I understand that it's potentially going to have problems with a wet basement. It's main and building a basement underground, you always run that risk. I want to protect the quality of the water in the lake. So just giving you my two cents from a board member that if you come back with a new design, because the, the structure height has to be adjusted, but I would suggest changing those drains because I'm not going to vote for your project as is with those drains going directly to the lake. And just um, two other factors with the way this is designed with that drain. Um, number one, as I mentioned, that water is clean and filtered. And I understand if some groundwater came over the surface and picked up sediment, which you don't want to go in the lake, and then it went against the foundation and down through. I'd say probably that would be somewhat filtered. And then um, secondly, the without 
Well, without any kind of subsurface drainage, then this roof water would flow to the lake on the surface. And I think that that creates more erosion and sedimentation as opposed to what we're showing to go down through a filter and through the pipe. So there's a, um, there's a give and take. And I think putting the water below ground making sure it's filtered and also avoiding, which you want to do anyway, allowing any water to get in from the sides and falling down the foundation. I think this is a better design for that. That's, that's well, why I appreciate the filter and, and, and addressing the roof so that the runoff is going to be better and the direct runoff coming from the back. I'm not in disagreement, but you know, you're going to get infiltration from the sides, whether we like it or not. With freeze thaw, the December, you know, 18th event that just happened, where we had four inches of rain in the middle of winter with everything frozen, that's the reason everybody's basement flooded was because as the as as it freezes, it starts to thaw. The building against the building never freezes, so the water runs right over the surface, right down that magic little crack, and just runs right into everybody's basement. That's exactly what happens, and I understand the. The, the reality is, yeah, you're you're filtering the what's coming off the roof, which is appreciated. And we would ask you to do something anyways. We definitely don't want it to be right onto dirt and that running off. We would have said that anyways. But again, the under drain is 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 still to me daylighting it right next to the basin, right next to the lake is not ideal. Okay. Um, thank you. Anybody else have anything? I share some of your concerns, Greg. Um, and I was, I, I didn't see it anywhere here, Ellie. Did you have a copy or uh, a profile design of the plunge pool? No. Anywhere in the plans? Because I was looking for that. I'm trying to get an idea of just how big this structure is. And, and a question back to you folks does this constitute a new structure? The, the building of a, of a plunge pool. And I was trying to figure out, but again, from the design standpoint, is it to come up and does it have a, like, a, a spreader on it where the, the punch pool will eventually fill up and then it will slowly dissipate over the top of it? Or is it daylight of a pipe going into the pool and it's just going to flow more up? It will have a, a level lift toward the lake. Okay. Um, and, the, and the total size of it will be minor, uh, maybe four feet in diameter, simply to. Um, allow this water that isn't a significant flow coming out of either one of those under drains to just have a place to um, lose its energy, so to speak, which is what a plunge pool does. And so the water will just flow out of the pipe. Um, it can sit in this small pool and then we'll infiltrate. And if you did have excessive runoff of water coming across the ground, as it goes toward the lake, it will flow over that level lip. So instead of having a channel flow, it spreads right. it out. Right. From a coordinate standpoint, does that, the construction of that plunge pool constitute a restructure in the shoreline zone? Uh, we typically would not have considered that structure, I think. Uh, uh, we've seen that from time to time as a, uh, you know, feature for, uh, you know, for the erosion control issues and so forth, and uh, uh, excuse me for the drainage control and uh, uh, where they're definitely not it's not an impervious surface. It's very permeable. We typically wouldn't consider that. Uh, so um, in that respect, uh, I. I don't recall we have ever considered a structure, and I don't I don't think at any point that we would. Okay, at this time. And and just one more, just a question back to the, the board here on on the ordinance. Uh, I'm looking under expansions for non-conforming structures. Uh, article two nine C one B expansion of any portion of a structure within twenty five feet of the normal high water line. Dot 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 dot. Is prohibited, right? And that that was what I mentioned in my comment. Uh, 
uh, requires a square footage calculation. Yeah, there's a very small sliver of that, which is uh, within the 25 feet. Would that would be ineligible uh, uh, floor space for uh, calculating an expansion? Okay. Yeah, and, and for that, they were leaving that based on the plans. They're leaving that little sliver that's in the 25 foot zone the same. The, the floor, the square footage. We're not talking volume. We don't do volume. We just do square footage. Yeah. So if they lifted the roof and you know had its volume, well, am I reading this? Am I interpreting this too liberally? Expansion of any portion of a structure within twenty five feet. So if you've got a structure and he's got a structure which is a legally non conforming structure, there's a portion of that that's within twenty five feet of the water, right? Right. Right. And it's I, I read this to say expansion of any portion of that structure. You've got to start with this well. When we would to interpret that typically as any portion of it within the 20 within feet. the 25 feet. No, it doesn't eliminate the whole structure. Thank it's you. only the portion that's right. in this 25 foot zone. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. So yes. Anybody else? Don? I have a question again for Don. So was this application submitted to Obviously, watershed district for review and to the Winthrop Water District for review. We were submitted to the Cogsey um, Watershed District. It was not submitted to the Water District. Go ahead. Can I just add something to that? Please. Um, I've been working here and I've seen some codes for like I was a code for the town for 14 years under contract. We did it. Um, historically, in, uh, we, do, we have never been involved in single family residential short man developments in winter. Um, for whatever reason, the planning board, the CEOs never <laughs> asked for our input. Don did share these with me. I'm always interested in I do those for Manchester, I do them for Monmouth Planning Board. Usually we do site visits. <laughs> I don't, you know, I haven't done a site visit, so it's kind of difficult for me to make any comments about the site, any kind of potential for um, uh, preventing erosion. Reducing erosion, redirecting runoff anywhere. I, I can't just look at this. Um, but um, I, you know, I'm I'm happy to comment on these. But um, and typically, our involvement with Winthrop has been limited to subdivisions and commercial mm -hmm. or institutional high school that kind of those kind of developments but for stormwater. Thank you. Does anybody else on the board have a question or a point of If I could follow up on that for just a moment. Is there something with the agreement or the membership that we have that precludes that? Or is no. it something we haven't participated in? I think it's just something you haven't participated in. So probably we would like to participate. Yeah, in. but like, you have but there's eight to towns that just did. It's like, you know, things are starting to pick up. I mean, I'm here mostly for like a restaurant one, and I've got a 26 lot subdivision in the south end of Van Best Cook in Wanda, which is a huge subdivision, you know, and for nowadays, it is 26 lots, mm -hmm. 70 acres, right on the shore. It's really mm -hmm. Van Cook, so um, I've got yeah. a lot of things dealing with a lot of reviews and um, uh, for, for these mostly, right, this is how I look at the shoreland zoning projects. If it's allowed, the code enforcement officer should be able to, the planning board should be able to determine if the expansion is allowable. If it is, I don't subjectively say, well, I don't think you should allow it. My biggest concerns would generally be erosion control. That's what I'm, I'd, I'd be most concerned about during the activity, putting a new foundation under here. I did see that there's a mention of putting a, a road control mix, but you had you did not need to receive um, uh, an earth moving on a, a soil disturbance permit PDR DEP for like any soil disturbance with 100 feet. Did you get that PDR? Yes. Okay, so they probably have erosion control measures that might be probably a little more detailed than the road control mix, or is that the berm? That's all they. Yes, this or what, how many hundred yards? 400 plus. Yes. And that's kind of steep slope. I looked at it. That's about a 10% slope in there. 
Yeah. So, um, and, and, and we have talked with Mark about that. As Mark says that, you know, and when he approves the permit, he makes sure there's somebody that's shoreland certified. Well, I, I see they have it. Right. They did in this case, yeah. but I'm just saying we know that that's something that he requires on his side before he'll right. approve a permit in right. the shoreland zone. Right. So but that's something we kind of maybe shouldn't, but that's something we kind of just normally approve because yeah. we know that. We know that they're not going, you know, that he's going to have somebody that, that is taking the training is going to be putting up all of the required, all yeah. requirements. Like something like this, I mean, just one of my concerns is, is really is that um, you're not going to get this job done. No. And you can have a three to four train event anytime within it's going to rain weeks. Yeah, it's going to rain. Close. It's like um, you can be caught with your pants down, is essentially how they say it. And uh, you know, I, a lot of times I would like to like to see beefed up erosion control, something in addition. Now, I would not be favorable. I'm not that favorable to silt fence and this kind of a terrain on steep. You probably got rocky terrain, you probably have roots and trees. You're not going to be able to trench and anchor yours. I'd love to have erosion control things, but still, maybe some hay bales, yeah. state hay bales to keep the burn of erosion control mix in case that gets overwhelmed by yeah. steep, that heavy flow. Mm -hmm. Because I'm telling you, I mean, we do walk, you know, water levels for the lakes around here. We've seen water levels rise a lot of shoreline erosion. And uh, that's that's awful close. Uh, it's uh, you know, get in and get in there and get out of there as quick as you can if what you try to do and not get caught in the rain of it. Um, now I just want to add one thing though too about the about the uh, the trench. Um, and 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 I and I do share some of your concerns, Greg, but like, uh, I've always been under the understanding that DEP uh, on these infiltration trenches will allow you to almost pipe it directly into the lake. And an infiltration around a foundation, as long as the runoff going into the trench does not include <laughs> any driveway, no gravel, uh, natural areas, and um, and I think what um, Elliot made a point about the closer you get clean water to get into the lake, it's just like rainwater going into the lake. And it has less opportunity to cause erosion on its way there. It's, uh, I mean, there's, there's, there's no perfect way to get rid of water, right. but sometimes you just take the, the least problematic way. But um, I mean, if it's just ground filtered groundwater and roof runoff, which essentially is essentially rainwater, which isn't necessarily clean. Right. You like the filter, but, you, water, but right? you can't do anything about it because you got a lake that doesn't have a roof over it. Yeah, anything right. that's coming down in the rain is hitting the lake oh, yeah. too. So I know, I, mean, I know. Yeah. But, um, but anyways, getting back, to, I, I don't want to hold you guys up. No, it's just I, I, I'd be happy to look at uh, a single family once. Um, Don, I would love to keep having them coming. Um, if something raises a big red flag, I'll make sure I'm here. Otherwise, maybe I'll communicate to you and just say, you know, like this is as long as they. Follow the guidelines and things like that, but I will get some. Yeah, because you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah. Does any member of the board have anything else to say? I I just I knew you were coming, John. No, I just have a question. The, this twenty-five foot mark. How do you come up with that? Um, we determine high water mark of a lake. How do you do that? We do it with a combination of visual um, scouring vegetation, and we also use elevation. So there's a published new elevation of low and arrow. So we take that combination, and then we determine high water mark. Elevation and the physical features along the shoreline. So it's not perfectly accurate. No. no. I think one reason I'm asking, I, I look at this little piece of the porch here. That's in that zone. If the scale's right, probably about a foot in, and it only goes about halfway across it. I'm, we're talking very little. Is that within the Margin of error for de determining the 25 foot runner? Um, yes. Um, this is a steep slope that goes right down to the water. Yeah. If you had an extremely flat level slope, which it was 
tough to determine, but where this land, as Bill mentioned, it's about a 10% slope on the way down. So it's a pretty definite line at the shore. So I'd say that um, that enclosed porch, this we you know, look at the users map, but this is a full size and it's 10 stages. Um, I show that porch, including the roof overhang, as being almost four feet into the 25. Oh, okay, is that much? So it's about 21 <laughs> yeah. feet from high water mark to that. Well, way. you couldn't be off that. You know, I know, I know I, Mark, I talked with him sometimes trying to determine that. And I, he was kind of, well, you just kind of look at the, Rip wrap and kind of decide, but it wouldn't be off the four feet. No, yeah, not yeah. not at this location. Definitely not. So it's definitely in the Yeah, and and uh, that comment I made as far as an uh, estimation of how much was out there. I think I I had estimated on as as about three feet up into the addition and then tapering down to yeah. point shape, but. Three, four feet. So, um, yeah, it, it's it clearly seems to be enough that within the margin of error that that it's yes. it's within the twenty five foot mark. Um, yeah, if it was, yeah, if you're looking at a, a six inches a foot, it, uh, yeah, it might be arguable. That was that. I think. I think. I think we're out there. What's that? I'm, okay. I had, I had one more. I don't forgot about it. Um, the trees. So there's a 10 inch birch that looks like it's definitely going to have to go, right? It's right in the foundation of the addition. Yeah. Are there any other of those trees you've labeled that have to be removed? Yes. You and say just to do the foundation. I'm assuming you got to move a couple of them. Right. Um, and I met with Mark Arsenal out there, and we looked, and this was last summer when we went first. Evaluating the cost, but also we're working on the garage across the street. And he has approved removal of all the trees. We've got them all flagged out there. So, any, and they're not identified on this plan, but trees that need to be removed have been looked at and approved by the Yeah, sometimes we'll ask for replanting. And sometimes Mark will, so you know, plant an eight foot tree where you took this one down, but obviously you can't put it in the building, so you'd have to put it someplace reasonable. So I think that would be something that the board would like to see is you know, specifically, you've labeled a lot of trees, but how many of them actually do you have to take down? And then, you know, roughly where your replantings are going to be. So that's sometimes helpful. We can do that. And what Mark said he's done in the past is. Once the project is done, if he reviews it and determines what, how many plants need to go back into right. the trees. But either way, where is acceptable to us. Okay. I, I mean, that's just another piece of that we've asked that gives us clarity. It's not necessarily a requirement. We could just talk about it, but if you've got time and you can put it in the plan, it's really helpful for us to review it, just see it. And it's not like, oh, the, you know, the eight foot birch tree has to go at this specific spot. It's more just, we're taking down some trees, we're putting some new trees in. That's really what we're looking for. Okay. That's reasonable. Re reasonable location. Not doesn't have to be exact, but taking down, hopefully you've got a pretty good handle on that. You know, just based on how you're going to be moving and how you're going to be working in the zone. So that was it. Oh, that? <laughs> it looks like you would have saved something. Just that when you get to the public um, input portion, we have someone on um, Zoom who would like to speak. Okay, this is public portion of the meeting. Um, why don't we go with the June? It's Kat who has um, indicated she'd like to oh, speak. Kat, I can. Okay, Kat, would you like to say something? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kat Hoy. I'm uh, 179 Narrows Pond Road, so I'm on the same pond. Um, first of all, thank you to Haley um, for sharing her screen. That was very helpful. And um, some of the comments I had were already covered here, such as the tree adjacency to the home and replanting. So thank you for covering that. Um, 
I did have a couple questions. Is it related to the basement? I didn't see, and maybe I missed it, um, the depth from the deepest portion of the basement to the high water mark. And the reason I bring that up is because, believe it or not, we've had basically two 100-year floods in the past year on our pond, and we've had water all the way up to and coming over the causeway. So just as a fellow homeowner with a basement, I just wanted to caution you that that definitely happens on our pond and um, just ensuring that whatever the basement depth and the drainage plan are, take that into consideration. Um, additionally, with that, as we were talking about erosion during construction, to ensure that wherever those hay bales go, they they plan higher up the hill than they intend to because of those high water marks that happened, like I said, twice this past year. Um, and then my last question, uh, more for my information, was we were talking about the restrictions within the 25-foot setback. Um, does that include the basement portion? Because we were talking about the maximum structure height, but then I don't know if we talked about the basement portion that actually extends into that as well, and if that's then an issue with either getting approval or flooding or what have you. So those are my comments. Thank you so much. I could be fine. Thank you. Um, in response to the maximum height allowed, uh, the uh, the height, um, the way that the height is measured on a building such as this is, would be from the lowest point of the ground um, at the base of the building, not not to the not to the building floor, but the lowest point to the ground uh, would be uh, to the highest point of the building would be the building height from from the from the ground to the roof, not not the basement floor or the main floor. All right. Does anybody in public have anything to say? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else up before you go back and no? Okay. Go ahead. I, you have... I have, oh, I have a question about Kate Kate's question, if if I can ask. Of course you can. Um so Kate had asked about the the basement inside of that 25 foot and in, inside of that setback. And so it, I was just wondering if you could clarify that again, just, I mean, from what, from what, what I understand, we can build a basement inside the 25 foot setback. Um, could you please clarify if that is allowed or not? Uh, yes, you're allowed to uh, put a basement under the building within a 25 feet. Uh, the, uh, uh, as I mentioned, the problem with that would be uh, being able to expand that area and also the height limitation. Uh, but putting a basement in, as long as you're not increasing the height uh, or exceeding 15 feet, uh, is permissible. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, I can say yes, go ahead. The elevation questions that cat across the lake had on um, the basement floor elevation is proposed to be 178.1 feet. And the 100 year flood elevation is 176. So the basement floor elevation will be a little over two feet higher than the 100 year flood. Also, on two <coughs> Under drain foundation drain outlets we show, they are both the inverts, the bottom of the pipe where it comes out of the ground, are 176.5 feet. And again, the 100 year elevation, flood elevation is 176. So we're a half a foot higher than the 100 year flood. We'll close the public portion of the meeting. Okay. I think we need to kind of see what the board overall wants to do with this particular project. 
So, who wants to speak first? I guess I would propose a table uh, for the applicant to come in with a revised application. The, other, the only other option is to deny it, but I, I think we can just okay. redesign with redesign meeting the requirements that so we're not requirements is a violation we can't yeah we yeah. can't we can't right we can't yeah we've got a that. couple of yeah a okay. couple of things in the proposal we can't but i think everything else we could just highlight and all right these the things that we don't like but just so they know but anybody else okay we're going to go through the list and uh correct right, because they're not tabling it maybe we're going to the applicants if that's no, we have to. There's a motion to table, so you would go through the criteria at the next meeting when right. you come back with an application that would meet the criteria. But it would be very helpful for me and the applicant if you could bullet real quick a punch list. So we're going to table it. Okay. okay. So do I don't have to do. It. I do. No, you don't need to go through the criteria. Okay. Thank you. So let's um. Okay, those that, did you want to say something? I wanted to make a request to table the application. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, we um, hear you. Thank you. Yeah. Will, oh. will it be appropriate to um for both the applicant for me and for the architect to meet and talk with your planner just so we're and maybe with codes with Mark mm -hmm. to make sure we're clear on these items and then work through a redesign that we need to so it will be conforming. Yeah. G yeah. right. G do, do you want to list now or what they've said tonight so you can give it a start? Okay. Yes. We can we can do that. Um like, like two guys that. here. Go ahead. We can make a motion. Okay. Well, you have to make the motion. I would like you to tell them what I'm going to give them oh, as well the as the motion. Oh, I should sure. Sure. We can do it all together. Oh, my Does that work for you? It works for me. Okay. Um, I'm going to request that we table case number 2401 94 consideration of, of a request for conditional use permit expansion of a legally non conforming cottage. In the shoreland zone, Richard Jones and Susan Bond, map 25, lot five. Um, we're tabling it for specifically the, the, the number one concern is the building height. Um, it needs to be conforming. So within the 25 zone, 25 foot zone, it must be 15 feet or lower, or actually it can't be expanded, so you can't increase the height. Um, so that needs to be that needs to be addressed. Um, and then the other items we've mentioned as the board as concerns, not necessarily a, a vote either way, that um, was the trees that we'd like you to label which trees you're going to remove and um, which trees you're going to be potentially adding, again, a proposed uh, replanting schedule. So that was number one. Uh, number two, we'd like to see uh, considerations of the applicant to reconsider the daylight drains that are uh, right near the shoreline and, and reconsider other drainage uh, options. Um, and if they are going to keep those drains, make sure to supply us with a schematic of what the actual plan would be. Um, and I think third, uh, just based on Bill's comment and, and our, you know, maybe a, a little further explanation of, of how we could beef up shoreline, uh, shoreline protection uh, during construction. So specifically, if we're going to dig those those plunge pool lines, how are they going to be protected during construction? And um, we've got an erosion control berm that's that's going to be adequate, but how's that going to get anchored um, against a steep slope so it's going to be stabilized so that it won't wash away? Um, I think that's all I had on my list. Okay, I think I covered it. You can put it. Want to say? I'll second that. Okay. Did you ask for it? Did you ask for it? Yes, I asked first. I asked first and then put it in the end. So somebody's got a second and I. I second. You second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we will now start page 2402. Um, 54 Sunset Path Lane, consideration of a request for a conditional use permit to expand the legally known conforming house in the Shoreland Zone. This is for Joanne Bronson. It's map 049, lot 005. Does anyone have any presentation for that? Uh, hi, I'm uh, I'm Lexi White. I'm uh, acting on behalf of Jocelyn Dixon, Jocelyn Dixon Architecture. We're acting as agent for Joanne Bronson, um, which is in the application uh, materials. Um, our deed is in there, and uh, we shared an email with Dawn previously, having her sign off on that um, agreement. Um, uh, I, I'll, I'll direct you to sheet A50. Um, which hopefully you have in your session. Uh, and I'll kind of walk you through the basics of our proposal. Um, so uh, we're proposing to construct an addition to the existing 1,300 square foot uh, single family residence. Um, this, it's a single story uh, addition, um, uh, which would be about 338 square feet. Uh, 133 square feet of which is in, within the 100 foot setback, and the remain, remainder of that proposed addition is behind the 100 foot uh, shoreline uh, setback. Um, uh, additionally, uh, we're looking to add a 930 square foot garage, um, again, beyond that 100 foot uh, shoreline um, setback, um, but, but within the 250 uh, feet from the shoreline. Um, this addition is within the 30%, um, ex the addition portion is within the 30 foot, um, or excuse me, 30% uh, uh, maximum um, addition uh, requirements. Um, we have uh, provided on the plan um, a location for the silt fence um, just in front of that um, uh, addition uh, portion to the existing structure as part of our ribbon. Uh, control measures. Um, and we have consulted with uh, an excavator who is a shoreline certified excavator, which is also your certificate should be in the packet that um, you received from us. Um, if you look at sheet A51, uh, um, this is our uh, we're calling it a revegetation plan. Um, I just want to highlight based on, um, especially based on the last discussion. Um, that uh, in downslope of the new uh, proposed slab for the garage, uh, we're proposing a couple um, uh, uh, 25 foot long, uh, two foot wide um, uh, terraced uh, rocks for retainment for garden beds as another kind of a storm runoff mitigation um, uh, piece to the puzzle. Um, let's see what else I want to add. Um, yeah, I mean, those are those are the basics. I'm I'm prepared to offer any um, additional you know questions you might have. Uh, a long list of the materials that are helpful. Um, but uh, we're retaining the uh, existing ridgeline structure on the existing house, so the increase in the uh, height of the structure is not to increase it. Um, and then the uh, proposed garage is to be um, at a 15 foot six height. Um, and that's again behind the 100 foot. Uh, and, hi, I just, I just want to introduce myself on Zoom. I am Jossie Dixon working with Lexi, who just presented on this project. I'm the architect. Um, so I am here to answer additional questions too. Joanne, the owner, is also here on Zoom. I apologize I couldn't be in person tonight. So thank you so much. Does anyone want to something to say? Of course. Thank you. 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 Th
Um, okay, I had a, a couple of comments, questions. Uh, one being, um, in this packet, we had a, a, a larger site map with uh, some topo lines on it. However, this lot did not seem to have any. Uh, I was really interested in, uh, uh, are we dealing with exceptionally steep slopes here? Uh, what, uh, any idea of what we're dealing with as far as, uh, as far as uh, the, uh, Slopes of pictures of ground, particularly in the areas where the construction is going on. Hmm. So, at the area of the uh, proposed uh, garage pad, um, as part of uh, looking into the maximum slopes required for the driveways, I calculated that at um, 6%, which is under the 10% maximum. Um, I think I would also highlight on um, on A100, maybe it's a little bit varied, but we've added elevation reference points at the existing corners, or excuse me, at the corners of the uh, uh, structure and at the edge of the um, existing versus new kind of portion of the addition. Um, the existing house, the lowest uh, elevation is at 214 and, and the point of um, uh, the addition is at 220, um, and the lake itself right now, uh, the 100 year floodplain is at 215. So we're five, the proposed addition is five feet above at the minimum um, and then beyond. So from the, um, the shoreline, um, you know, 45 feet, uh, excuse me, the existing house is 45 feet back, and that's, um, you know, at, at um, 214. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> I'm giving well, a lot of numbers. Yeah, that, that gives me a little bit of an idea. Um, the um, Now, the location of the garage, what, what sort of uh, local elevation um, around there? Uh, is that um, is, is that very steep? I noticed you get the garages and then you get proposed a, a, a basically, I guess, a, a terraced uh, garden beds. Is that right? Uh, are those basically stepping down from the garage? Those are stepping down from the garage. Yes, as a um, like I mentioned, it's somewhat of a mitigation technique for the runoff, potentially from the roof okay. of the new structure. Um, and as, as it appears on this diagram, uh, the garage and the flower bed are all greater than 100 feet from the water. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, I guess I had just one other comment I wanted to throw out on this. Uh, again, looking at the uh, principal structure and the 30% addition on there, uh, it appears that um, probably somewhat more than half of that um, addition is <clears throat> is actually beyond the 100 foot line. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so actually, when you get beyond 100 foot, that 30 uh, percent is, you know, oh, okay. no longer applies. You can kind of go back okay. a, a bit further if you want it, but uh, uh, and and that's why if 30 percent works, um, it's uh, it's not it's not really 30 percent expansion within the 100 feet. It's it's less than 30 percent of that. But, uh, but that's fine. I just want to throw that out. That, um, if you're going back beyond 100 feet, uh, you don't have the 30% limitation anymore. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, I think yeah. we thought that as long as the portion was within, yeah, no, then no. you should be um, Oh, one, one other question. Uh, the, uh, the diagram shows uh, 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 quite, a, quite a bit of, uh, uh, appears to be driveway there, the, uh, uh, the, the grayed out, uh, pathway there uh, is how much of that is existing and how much would be a uh, new uh, new driveway? Yeah. Okay. So I 
I can calculate that as well. Um, 462 square feet of driveway will be added in total to the site. So, uh, you know, uh, that's in addition to what's there. Um, could you show us where that would be, what you're adding? Yeah, it's sort of um, uh, where the driveway uh, kinks here. At, okay. the, at the edge from yeah. there uh, forward, you know, yeah. there, there is already some existing um, driveway actually that extends further along the site. So oh, we're see. getting rid of this, oh, okay. you know, and then reworking it to have a larger turnaround space okay. for a vehicle. Okay. And so that total square foot that we're adding is 462. Okay. Uh, so the the existing uh, extends beyond. Are you going to uh, uh, restore that, or is that remaining? Yes, I believe that the idea is that we'll revegetate the areas that are have been disturbed. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. That's all I have for now. Thank you. Anybody else? Your um, yeah, just just a note for your contractor. Um, your silk fence line on A fifty one is on a couple other plots, but. Um, that needs to extend all the way past the driveway, you know, where you're going to be disturbing, adding a driveway, adding a mm -hmm. garage. It can't stop okay. right at the end of those berms. It really needs to keep going. Okay. Um, so that was, that was one comment. Um, and then I just wanted to double check on the driveway. I just had to know, is, is it going to be paved or is, it, is the plan to keep it a gravel driveway? Um, or is it, I don't know what it is now. So Jossie, can you speak to that? Yeah, I, be I believe it. the existing is gravel and the plan is to keep it gravel. Um, Joanne, if, if that's not correct, please pipe in. But that's my no, understanding. No, hi. Yeah, hi, this is Joanne. That's correct. It will stay a gravel driveway. I know it doesn't matter for the calculations. I just said yeah, it's more for the drainage of the runoff and the angle is then the, the degree is more important. That's why I asked the point of the gravel. I mean, they're both impervious. They are, absolutely. But when you look at DEP's phosphorus control of Lake Watershed, the lead calculation based on phosphorus export from developments, you use a high export from gravel driveways and roads, 1.75 pounds per acre. If you pave it, it's 1.25. I know. Yeah, yeah so it's it, a study done by the USGS by Scott Olson yeah. Yeah. and Rob Dudley <laughs> when he worked with his supervisor. Oh, I know. They so, yeah, exactly. So I know. I know exactly where they come yeah. from, but it's it's more. I always worry about, especially near the water, on paved driveway, you can actually develop more velocity, more energy in the yeah, water. Yeah, yeah. So my concerns are more of when you hit those curves with the bends. I would have been more interested in the contours like Ed was had they have paved this. If it's leaving you gravel, I understand. You know anybody that's like, oh, Hydro Twenty One says, you know. Pavement and gravel are the same. They're not the same runoff coefficient. I got books I can tell you. But be that as it may, the energy you can generate off a driveway, you always have to worry about it. But gravel just has a little bit more infiltration, and usually you'll you'll take a little bit more material with you that'll actually buffer the velocity, the energy, and it won't dig into the loam as a paved driveway would. Because the asphalt doesn't move no matter what you do. The gravel will migrate and kind of make a spot that you'll want to correct and fix. So I always worry about paved aim anywhere oh, down hill yeah, yeah, slow. So yeah. that's my only concern. You're gonna have a little engineering there. there. That's all. That's all I just yes. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. dug the ditch and I sat in the truck two nights <laughs> to collect that data. So thank you very much. <laughs> 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 yes. Oh yeah. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Does the board have any other questions? Anything they want to add, subscribe, divide? No? Okay, we'll open it to the public. Does anyone here have any questions or anything to add? Nobody online, no? Yeah, anybody online wish to say anything? No one's raising their hand. Okay. okay. All right, we'll continue. I'm easing you, John.
Oh, I just missed my apology. You missed the whole thing. I just said, look at someone's giving me this paper to get to work. All right, what we'll, we'll do, we're going to do it now, right? I go through the whole thing. You'll Excuse me, I've just got this new thing. Yep, and I apologize, it's still a little awkward. But um, so there's a draft binding on your on the table. You have it. Okay. You have have it. It. And what all it is is going through the criteria for the mm -hmm. conditional use and it states the criteria from the ordinance in black and the blue is the statement that the applicant has made to the criteria. So the board needs to go through and make a finding whether or not the criteria is that met based on the information that's been provided. You can add a comment to that <clears throat> and then vote on each one and then conclude the conclusion someone can make a little of an overall vote on whether the application should be approved. Thank you, John. Does that make sense? And then, oh yeah. Okay. So I, I, I didn't mean but it makes sense me, but I didn't know they even had a clue that we were going through oh, it. So I was like, okay, sure. Okay. Well, the public notices. Um, the required $100 application fee was received. The notice of application was mailed to budding property owners within 500 feet at least uh, 10 days prior to the meeting. The planning board agenda was published in the Kenny Beck Journal. The item has been noticed as, as a public hearing for the meeting of 12 of 2 14 24. Uh, we'll go down to uh, it. says here that back to applicable to condition on uses. Will maintain safe and helpful conditions. The applicant stated the project team will maintain safe and helpful conditions at the work site. All work will be performed in conformance with ethical OSHA standard. Any comments? Huh? No? Approved? Everybody approved? Yeah. Yeah. Are we doing that at all? Aaron? Yes, please. No. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Number two, will be established and maintained in accordance with the improved erosion sediment control and sediment control plan. The applicant states that the, the project team will establish and maintain in accordance with the following erosion and sediment control plan. All site work will be completed by joint land certified contractor with erosion measures to include a silk fence along with erosion control bar and be located at the 100 feet step back and stay in place until the construction of the site is complete. The NPS 2163 certificate, certificate is included in the permit application. Everyone, we, how do we do that? Well, no, if I wanted to put an amendment on that. On that's what, just that's what you say. say. That's what you're going to say. Do I put that on this one? Yes. Well, yeah. You want to speak to that individual criteria? Yeah, because that was the that was the request that I was going to ask that self could be extended. Yeah, um, I guess that's, this would be way too quick. So this is where the board comments would go. So I'll take All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be my comment. That's the erosion control bar. The erosion, the well, the, the 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 actual they labeled it as a silk fence, mm -hmm. but they established silk fence um, that's on a uh, figure A O fifty one. Uh, be extended, you know, well past the the uh, driveway construction and the shed and the and the garage construction. That it be extended approximately about like fifty feet. Okay. So, what what I'm going to say is that in response to that is I will. You're saying that this can be met if they do that to the condition. Yeah, I was going to add that a condition onto a possible approval if we got there. Correct. Thank you. So. Oh, we'll, we'll be back to. Um, we'll, be, okay. <laughs> I, well, that's yeah. That's, that's met, I guess yeah. the question is. Yeah, as a condition. Do we just conditionally pass it that it will be added on as a? Condition I guess when we get to the, the end. Because yeah. I'm going to note them as we go along, as conditions that how it's met is with the condition. We don't need to list them all at the end as long as we can. We get each one as you go through. Oh, okay. A little condition right here. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. That works. All right. And, and so we have to approve vote on this, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, we do. We're going to take, each yes, one. we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> right. We're going to vote on each one. We're going to vote on uh, the erosion control will be met as, as we make the condition. 
Yeah. Well, uh, so anybody that will... Yes, yes <laughs> no, maybe. That's what I was asking. Well, is that a question or is that... Yes. It's approved with a condition. condition. Yes. Yes. It was a condition. Yes. yes, approved with condition. Yes. Yes. Otherwise, it, you would say it wasn't net. Okay, okay. we're going to put that. When we approve, it's approved, and then we list these conditions. So then the, the findings... When we the, approve it. And then the conditions yeah. will be listed at the bottom of the findings, okay. correct? So this is not passed. We vote... Oh, we... Passed it with condition. condition. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can check plus. You can work on this more at workshop. <laughs> okay. So, sorry. <laughs> Number three will ensure access to the site from existing or proposed roads is safe and adequate. The proposed use will not cause or aggravate undue traffic congestion. The applicant states the project team will ensure access to the site for existing or proposed roads are safe and adequate. Access to the site will be in accordance with both posted roads as well as weight restrictions. As the use number of dwellings units will remain unchanged, there is no additional traffic congestion expected or around the site. Any comments from the board? No? So the vote is passed, done. We got approved. Approved. Yeah. Do we need a motion to approve that? Motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. 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 Number four. We'll have adequate yeah. water supply to meet the demands of the proposed use and for fire protection purposes. The applicant states the project team will have adequate water supplies to meet the demands of the proposed use and for fire protection purposes. The water line servicing the Existing residents will remain in service throughout the course of the construction. I had to kind of read it. I can't read it out loud and get it in the head. You know, oh, okay. you, know how, you know how I am. Okay. <laughs> Was the board, uh, anyone in the board want to have something to say? No comments. All right. Make a motion to approve. Approve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's Number five, will include adequate provisions for the disposal of all rice water and solid waste. The applicant states the project team will include adequate provisions for the disposal of all waste water and solid waste. GC will arrange for a quarter joint <laughs> to be used by all construction group during the duration of the project. Comments from the board? No. Vote. Approve. Approve. Johnny in there. Yeah. yeah. Will not cause water pollution and sedimentation. The applicant states the project team will not cause water pollution and sedimentation. See notes on erosion control and work with the shoreland certified contractor as well as the installation of the silt fence per provision to above. Board comments? Provision as with number two. Provision as with number two. Put uh, condition. Same condition as number two, right? Right. Same condition. Okay, so, uh, so, yes. Okay. Motion in favor. Second. All in favor. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. Okay. But, but I don't even really know what I'm going to do. Okay. So, that is. Um, Asked with condition. Okay, number seven. We'll provide for adequate management of stormwater runoff without adverse impact on site adjacent land and water bodies. Anybody have anything to say? Questions? Approval? Oh, Second. Okay. Everybody in favor? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Number eight. Monitoring site design is in conformance with all flood hazard protection regulations, and any portion construction construction of fill will not affect the water body's ability to store flood water. The applicant states the project team will ensure the site design is in conformance with all flood hazard protection regulations and any proposed construction of fill will not affect the water body's ability to store flood water. 
All site work construction will take place at elevation two to all feet or above. Board comments. Motion to approve. Second. Everybody and vote. Yeah. Very good. Now, Madonna, will not have an adverse impact on spawning ground fish at aquatic, aquatic flight, birds, and other wildlife habitat. The applicant states the project team will not have an adverse impact on spawning ground fish at, at aquatic <laughs> life, bird, and other wildlife habitat. Erosion control measures will, be, will protect any runoff from reaching the lake. No wetlands are, are noted on our 2019 site survey, and all disturbed areas will be revegetated. Fluid comments. No comment. No comment. Will we accept? Yeah. Second. We are. Everybody vote? Yes. <laughs> okay. Number 10. Will conserve shore cover, including physical plants mm -hmm. of access. The lake, ponds, and streams in natural beauty. The applicant states the project team will conserve shore cover, visual and physical points of access to lakes, ponds, and streams in natural beauty. No construction playbook is planned within 75 feet of the lake edge. Board comments? Vote. Comment. Will we accept? Second. Accept. Number 11, will not adversely affect the quantity or quality of groundwater. The applicant states, the project team will not adversely affect the quantity or the quality of groundwater. All waste will be properly disposed of during construction and revegetation. Minimal coverage of non-vegetated services will protect the site from first contamination. Board comments? Move the condition is met. That's positive. Second, <laughs> everyone in vote, please. Number 12, we'll comply with all applicable performance standards in this ordinance. The applicant states the project team will comply with all applicable performance standards in order in, in the ordinance as described above in the article. <laughs> of the zoning ordinance. Board, board comments? I move with the uh, rooms. Okay, I'm gonna make a motion and second. Thank you. Hello, favor. Aye. There's no more. Did right? <laughs> we say yes or not? Oh, you're doing more. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. 13 and 14. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 okay, I thought you were pulling your glasses off. Oh well, I had that. Too. <laughs> I had my hand up there. I mean, oh, oh, we have two more. Two more. Number thirteen. Will ensure the proposed site design provides adequate buffers and on-site landscaping to protect neighbor neighboring property from detrimental factors of the proposed development. The applicant states the project team will ensure the proposed site design provides adequate buffers and on-site landscaping to protect neighboring properties from detrimental factors of the proposed development. All work areas are at least 40 feet away from the property boundaries. Good comments. Vote. Vote okay. Number 14 will protect the archaeological and historic resources as designed in the comprehensive plan of designated and comprehensive plan. Sorry. The applicant states the project team will protect archaeological and historic resources as designated in the comprehensive plan. We have no knowledge of any archaeological or historic resources on site, but will follow all course of action described in the comprehensive plan should any resources be encountered during the course of the construction. Board comments? Vote. I move to be approved. Second. All in favor? Second. That is approved. Okay, now make a motion. All right, does anyone want to make a motion? Or, 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 or. 
Yeah. I'll make a motion that in case uh, number 2402, 54 Sunset Pass Lane, consideration of a request for a conditional use permit to expand the illegally non conforming house in Shoreland Zone. Joanne Bronson, map 49, lot 05, be approved with the following condition that we outline in item two. Which is? I'll second that. I'm going to state it again. It's like three times. I know. That's okay. Oh, we, we got it. Okay. okay. Can we extend the zone fence? Yeah, that was on a good zero. Keep going. Yeah, we must have some fun over here. Sorry, I just want to push this. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Anybody disapprove? No. Okay. Uh, this has been approved with conditions which are. You have the condition written down. You have the condition. I wrote it down, yeah. You did? Okay. So no, the no, 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 I assume you're going to send a follow up with the yeah. approval. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the decision that will stop it up. Yeah, okay, great. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. John, what did you yeah. say? You said something that I didn't hear. So the law also requires, the law, the state statutes always also require that you send a notice of decision. Which is um, so if this went to the court, if someone appealed this, the court's gonna look at this and if you just approve it, but you don't say why, okay. they don't, they're gonna remand it back to the to the board to, yeah, exactly. to take this exercise. Um it, and in the past when I've done when I've done this, I've I've written it such that the board would reference the staff memo on the, the draft findings as opposed to going through each one. So I'm gonna talk to the attorney more about that and see. Um, if they would find that acceptable, because it. And that's, that's that was that was going to be my statement. Could we just, as a starter, say that as a board member, you know, first thing we're going to do is is anybody like to discuss any of the fourteen items that we've read and list, and then once we've discussed it, we said I have a test that I've read this. So as a board member, we've read through them. Now we're saying we we've, we've read them and they're all approved. Um, and then we say now we just make a motion with that possible item, but we can specifically reference item two in our, you know, when we're making these requests of the applicant, we can say specifically it's approved following that you address the silt fence, which is clearly needs to be met to meet item number two in our 14.1. I think that's reasonable. Um, and I'll confirm uh, that's the direction I would suggest, and I can direct. Um, but I'll just confirm to make sure that okay. because if the person who's going to represent us, if, if we if there's an appeal, <laughs> we want to make sure that you're documenting. You can point. push him a little bit or give him, you know, let me hold. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do is, is we're going to read the, what they're supposed to have and we, that we say we saw it and there it is. Right. right? We've got it all written. So we're gonna but read. we did say we read through it and we don't have it. The whole thing. Well, we're not going but we read through it on our own. So the ones that we don't that want, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to go, we'll we, have to read it. We would absolutely have to go through so, it if we so want to, if, if we don't agree with any of them, we're going to go with this guy. Okay. Yeah, that's, okay. What, that's what my I have to, have to make sure I got I'm going to head in that direction and see if we can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Well, I've got another one on here. Yes, we do. That's what we're doing. No shoreland building. But not really. But that. Column three. Pretty simple application. Two or two. Yeah. Oh, I don't wish it. Oh, I see. Like you can look them up. I got it. You had it's that. printed. Yeah. <laughs> you, you I'm sorry. Fancy. I'm not. I've not had a great day. <laughs> no, if I if I make a blunder, you'll have to forgive me. Okay, we're going to discuss that. Uh, transitional approval. For case 24 3 2215 US Route 202, consideration of a request for a conditional use permit to establish a restaurant in an existing commercial building in the limited community room. Promise Ray Quinn, Junior Map 09 Lot 059. 
Right. Um, you have representatives of this? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's no problem. I'm Kelly Quinn. I'm Hi, Kelly. White. I'm also his realtor. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and mine seems a little bit less complicated than these other two. Um, so we're proposing to move our restaurant to the DR structure building that exists. We don't plan on changing the building at all. We don't plan on adding anything to it. If the only thing we might add would be our, um, our well, that, that I meant to the building. Um, the cooler, we may put the, the cooler that we have down in our basement now, which has, has our beer cakes in it, might just go on the outside of the building. But we don't plan on adding to the building or changing the building size in any way. Um, we plan on making the front part of it. Um, the restaurant in the back two sections, um, which is where their office and our kitchenette is now, will become our kitchen. Um, we will, there's town sewer there, so everything will tie into the sewer. Steve Robbins went and scoped. Um, the pipe out the other day to check it out and so that my plumber knows exactly where everything meets and he did that for us the other day. Um, we've applied for our DOT permit. We've met with DOT twice. The second time was this afternoon. Um, they do want us to move the, the, the area where the driveway is now. I've got a larger map, but I didn't bring a board to put it on. So um, if, I'll just use this one if it's okay with you all, which is what you should have in your plan. So currently there's two entrances. This is where their sign is here in the middle. And then there's an entrance on um, each side of it. Um, neither one of those meets the same, same I can't remember how they worded it, the safe, safe site distance. So they are recommending that we move the entrance down to here, which will be just west of, east of the, the that boundary line. So there's shrubs along here. If you're down here and we walked it with them today. So if you're down at the lower edge of the property, coming towards this Monmouth, not Augusta way. Um, you can actually see all the way down. So if anybody's pulling out to go to the Augusta direction, you have clear sight. If anybody's pulling out to head back towards Winthrop Center or Monmouth, there's the center turning lane. So you can pull in there. Um, so we met with I think the manager, he's got a title, but I can't remember. David Allen is his yeah. name. And then another gentleman by the name of Daryl. So they told us they were going to approve our permit and we would move it down there. They're, we're going to make it 22 and a half feet. 22 and a half feet entrance there. It will be one entrance, which will be an in and an out. Um, they're going so to mark it's a sing, single entrance rather than the double entrance. Yes. Right. right. Okay. Right. And that's what they determined to be the the best location for it. Okay. And he said that they'll do all the paperwork and that we should have that. And actually, it's going to be mailed to the Strucks, not to us, because they're the current owners of the property. So it'll be mailed to them, and then we'll record it at the registry. Um, with that being said some of the things that we talked about of where different things are going to go might move slightly because this we just met with them this afternoon so we haven't really looked at this but i'm thinking that if we're going to do that instead of coming in and making a jog and then continuing on the road out back which is where the deliveries would come mm -hmm. i'm thinking that we would move the main parking lot over towards the edge of the patio area and then you would just come in straight instead of making a jog because we don't want our big trucks to do that. So that's probably, we'll look at that um, 
to determine the best way to either jog it or not. We are going to, they want us to plant a buffer here, um, which was, is really just landscaping and shrubs, which will close off those two entrances. Oh, okay. And then our handicapped parking may move because I might just put it out there where that driveway was, which would be a, a little bit better location for it. Um, so we might move it from over here to here, but we haven't determined that. And then we um, will be putting in the grease trap. And we're really not moving or changing anything at all. Mm -hmm. So the driveway basically is what you're changing. Exactly. exactly. That's the only thing we're going to change. Um, I was, when we were standing in front of the building and talking about it, I'm thinking, I was thinking that the road would be here and the, the land would be quite a ways up and it's actually not as much of an incline as I was thinking it was when I was standing there. Yeah. Um, but I'm thinking that the best thing to do would be to put the driveway in and then because Dave's got a driveway that goes all the way around right now and we'll maintain that so that our deliveries can come around and come in here and then come back out. So it might just, the parking lot might shift this way, that's all. And then I will, we will be adding a small vestibule at the front just so that you've got, you're not opening the door and having all the cold air go in and all the hot air come in in the winter. <laughs> But that that would be a very small, just structure, not heated in the front of the building. That's the only addition that we're making. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, signage. There's a sign out there now, and yeah. it's actually got power to it. It's got a marquee, and then the top sign is wooden. Um, we'll probably um, put our lighted sign up there. We do within the ordinance, we do have some pretty specific criteria. And Mark signage. gave them to me and our sign doesn't even come close okay. to the, because he did go over that. I met with I met with Mark and Don a month or so ago and he gave that to me and, it, and our sign doesn't come anywhere close to that. And I haven't looked at the sign ordinance for a while. but yeah. Yeah. That, He did that. give it to me and I have it in my folder, but I yeah. didn't memorize it because yeah. I knew that our sign wasn't even, yeah, we could go quite flat. Can't flash. <laughs> it would be lit, but it won't flash. Well, and lit is perfectly fine. It the won't flash. The place downtown. I gave Mark a heck of a time about that because every time I drove down, it looked like a circus in downtown. <laughs> no, <laughs> really no, no flashing Scott, lights. So damn, just so drywall right, right there by the oh, yeah. post office. It just was green and flashing and circling. And I'm like, it says in the ordinance you can't flash and it's flashing. No, no, flashing, no flashing, flashing no flashing yeah. lights. No, you can't have flashing. That's what it says. No, so, I said you can't flash. No, you can't flash. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Do you want to, I got two. Okay. I'll yeah. Go um, my first question was just power. Do you have adequate existing power at the site? Or do you, and the only reason is, you know, because sometimes I can make some major changes. Do you need to operate the power entrance for the building to it's got a 200 amp service there is now? That adequate for what you need. Um, our electrician okay. looked at it. Okay. But everything seemed to be fine. So it okay. comes into the large building. Um, and of course, a lot of our stuff's going to be in the back building, but he didn't he might put a sub panel out there, but he didn't say anything about change having to change anything like that okay yeah there's, there's a lot of things like i mean and then my second question again a lot of this goes through the code enforcement not necessarily for us for conditional use permit um but just you know sort of a question was sort of like parking how are you going to do grading are you thinking were you thinking like a paved driveway or is it going to right stay now kind of a gravel driveway the entrance is going to be paved okay. because it's a requirement for dot um it will be come in and then be it comes in from the curb cut and then it has to be like at least of the like a truck length long. Right. Um, but then your plan would be but we are whether we plant uh, not plant whether we pave all of this or not, I don't know. But we are def definitely gonna play pave part of this front parking area here. Okay. And we are gonna park we're gonna immediately well not immediately, depends on weather and everything else, but we're gonna pave this 
Paving is expensive. Oh, so whether we pay this little bit now and then next year we pay part of the parking lot and then next year we pave a little bit more, I don't know. We haven't gotten that detailed, but yes, this Would entrance be will be paved. paved at all? Not necessarily, not, not, not with what our conditions are. And I don't know if I want to pave it all. There's kind of like up in the front here, there's like broken pavement that's probably going to be suffice for what I want right now. Um, but I, with the cost of paving, I don't plan on paving. And the trucks right now out back of the restaurant is not paved, and nobody has a problem with the trucks and the, with the trucks. So, no, I, I, and I, I think I, Dave's got a pretty good there. solid base down there because of everything that they do. <clears throat> so I don't have any plans to pave this whole thing. Yeah, and I'm, I'm ecstatic that you moved in the entrance because I go, I went into trucks at least three times, four times a year. And always took my life in my hands to handle it. It's actually <laughs> it's my, it is an awful, awful <laughs> so like this driveway. I'm just in my head trying to figure clearance. out how everybody's so used to going in there that what I'm going to do for signage going so they don't go, oh, they, there's, they, there's the restaurant. There's no way to get in. Yeah. So that's what's going through my head right now is what we do for signage coming from Augusta. It's coming from... Oh, when you're hungry, you'll find the answer. <laughs> well, we're hoping that the, that the, the sign the will, sign be, will be, the, be. Well, maybe we should add it to make a flashing sign. Right? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> can't do that. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> questions? I was just going to, you're going to take that whole area they've got out there where the park is and all that? Is that um, for parking? No, no. For your. That's patio what that's what you're buying is that whole thing? oh the whole yeah. thing yes yeah. the yeah. like where the concrete yeah. structures yeah. are near when they keep their bark mulch right. that was going to be parking but parking's probably going to move here because that driveway's going to come up in yeah. there yeah. but yes that's all part of the mm -hmm. i think it's about a two almost exactly a two acre lot yeah. how many parking places are you having i don't know no. And the the what they require, we we discussed this when we met. Three customers you have, you have to you require one parking spot. Um, we'll probably I have. I was going to say it's in our ordinance. I don't know. It is. I just found this out the other day. I didn't even know that. Yeah, it's all laid out in the ordinance. But actually, I think we're probably going to end up with more parking spots than that because what we have now is probably what you require. And I don't think that's enough. Okay. Yeah, the employee parking, parking is going to be out back here. I'm sorry. It, it's hard to find parking in your existing location. Yes. It's going to be tough. Yes. <laughs> because we wanted to add a patio and there's no place to do it and all of that. But there's a perfect spot in that flat area where they always had their plants. And then the handicapped will go yeah, in there. Yeah, there's certainly plenty of room on that plot. I'm sorry. The so handicap will go in. The handicap, no, the oh. handicap will come. The handicap will park right out here in the front. Um, okay, you're upside. I'm upside down. Oh, so I'm, I'm this will up. this will be where the entrance will be somewhere right okay. around here. Yeah. So then I'll have signs that will direct handicap. This is where my handicap parking was going to go, mm -hmm. and where Dave has his truck right now. But I might turn this area right here into handicap okay. because that's going to be all closed off. Okay. And okay. that might be just a little bit closer. So I'll put handicap there. Okay. And I'll also probably have some spots for takeout. That way they can just um, they can come in and quickly out. and get their food and no, they're not parked over, over there. Me. So I come, you would bring it up. I could. <laughs> <laughs> we did that for people during COVID. We brought they oh. called and said we're here and I we brought it out to this. So. That was good. Yeah. Is trucks going out of business? Or they actually know? closed. They did. Yes, they, they both did. retired. Oh, okay. Robin's at someplace warm. Oh, nice. They had know, back surgery. Yeah, you retired at back surgery and they just wow. decided to call fit. They, they, yeah. they did a lot over. Well, what I didn't realize was that they actually had the whole business with the landscaping for sale all of last year. Oh, no. But they only had it on certain commercial mm -hmm. sites. I never knew it was sale for sale. So I never, I don't go on sites that are just strictly commercial. 
we were in Oregon on vacation for Christmas and I saw that she was retiring and they were closing and I, my wheels started turning and <laughs> they're still turning. <laughs> oh, they are. They don't stop very much. We came back, we looked at the building on January 2nd, the day after we got back from vacation and put an offer on it. So that's, that's great. That's good. Does anybody have any other questions? I have one question and it's for the board. Um, under our ordinance is Route 202 Development Zone. Uh -huh. um, existing lots of record, there shall be, you know, that's the one access point. Uh, all development shall maintain a 25 foot buffer along 202 except for the drive or access point. Maintain means keep it versus plant it, right? We're not gonna oh. require them to put a 25 foot buffer in vegetated buffer are we well it doesn't say but it doesn't say no, it doesn't say, yeah okay. i think it just i think the idea is to maintain it but they've got to change the driveway so they'll have to put something in there yes because i asked him specifically because he he had left and i was sitting in my car because i was behind them and the two of them were talking and then he came over to the car and he goes when i asked you to put something in here what are you thinking and i said i had thought about it and that middle structure of theirs where their sign is, is rocks all around. Right. And, and he nice said, that's what I don't want you to put. He says, because <laughs> if a car were to go off the road here and hit a rock, it doesn't move. Right. But if you have a shrub here, the shrub moves. And so it's not such an impact. Because yeah. I asked him about a fence too. And he said he'd prefer not, uh, I was talking about like a split rail fence. He said he'd prefer not that. Because if you hit it just right, then the fence yeah, is going to go through the windshield. Yeah. And I hadn't thought about that. And I was just at, kind of asking him because I didn't know, but it'll probably be just some of the small shrubs um, and maybe some of that grassy stuff that comes up like this, it, just so that it's noticeable that you can't drive in here anymore. <laughs> well, don't, well, don't get it so tall that they can't see your place. Exactly. <laughs> no, not that. Not that. No. No. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Ornamental grass. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we take public input. <clears throat> oh. I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't even see you. I you you were hiding question. behind them. I have a question. I mean, I've, I've known you the go site right ahead. That. It's your turn. I've, had, I've, been, I've known the site for 30 years, but I don't go around the whole portion of the site. I, I've gone over with some bark mulch in my truck once, but I was just curious looking at the parking area on the west side. What is the nature of the is it gravel there? What is it now? I'm not I really think, sure. It's all gravel. It is gravel because you well, look up Google Earth. There's there's definitely a different where they have their where they have their parking now on the, on all, the east side. It's all gravel. Yeah, you can see that's gravel. The other it's, side, it's all gravel, but there's a lot of mulch spilled over there. I go there. At okay, least that's eight that, trips a year. So I couldn't. Yeah, I don't know what yet. If they got one over your snow, and I wasn't able to get a good sense. Yeah, for no, it, so. it's gravel with lots and lots of spilled mulch. But that, so that's what's colored that area, right? That's and right. and and on the far end, where they're asking for the entrance to be is actually where they had their stone storage. So they had like three quarter inch sand, and with some big granite right. blocks. Mm -hmm. So those little bays they have like four bays there for like yeah. gravel stone and then they had like a, a sand and i think yeah. they had something else but then they had the huge mulch piles so that's really where the entry could always have been right. but that's where they're going to put it but it was all it's all gravel underneath like they had a gravel at one point but when you spill that much mulch on it i think it right. starts to decompose and you get but I, looked at, I looked at the google earth time series you know and um the most recent photograph is 2020 aerial shots and it does not have the concrete it didn't have the concrete oh they just added that after that yeah they just added yeah. it after and then a couple of series before that you could see depending on what season it was it was green over on that area it wasn't brown it was green because we're now the um because what i was i was looking at the site your, your map here we have the two large yeah. pine trees i could see those on google earth so then i was trying to then align everything up and I just didn't know and, and but it looks like things change over time and then they change back <laughs> so it's like there's you know things move around on a site I mean it's been an active site it's been working right so. and, and the road that goes around back I would argue that that's not gravel 
that is, you know, very loamy, very soupy. Which which way? Because uh, around the back of the building, to the right, it goes all. The yeah, way. it goes all the way around. Yeah. It doesn't matter which way you go. As you come off the gravel, okay. from the east side, <laughs> if you go down, it's gravel for a while, and then it kind of turns as it gets behind the building, it gets kind of soupy. But they have, and, and, and I actually could see this here, you have going around the back, you have gravel drive, and the gravel drive coming around the back, it's coming through and here. And continues through here. Right, then that's a, a work area. And like once well, you get to above there, that's, that's where you see all the marks, the mulch, yeah, yeah, color change. Yeah, exactly. When you look at it, it is really like a, a so driveway this, going so, on. So, so this, is all, this is all gravel going yeah. all around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, but I don't yeah. think you can see the gravel anywhere near those oh, piles because yeah. that's where the drainage went. Yeah. I had a feeling it's yeah. going mean, I'm sure there's gravel all gravel the place. Black mulch, yes, orange mulch, exactly. everything yeah. all yeah. over the place. Yeah. Yeah. And it spills all exactly. over the place. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that was my only question. I just didn't know because I was going to say if it's yeah, yeah. just oh, that, no. soil, they're, you know, they're tractors and they're front end loaders. You go through things in some cars. You get a whole lot of cars, and smaller tires going through so, so, oh, parking lot. It was yeah, somewhere else. I would rather have gravel. No, okay. no, there, there's no, got to no. be some gravel. I mean, even when it was raining, I've driven. I use. I drive that way when I ever had a trailer. And they would load mulch on my trailer, and I would drive that way, and I never really had a problem. But I, I, I mean, there was. It was definitely kind of soupy, but it was more like slippery, and then you hit something more solid underneath. So it wasn't like you were leaving things dry. Right. You were just definitely slipping down with them. So I, I, I think there's got to be gravel in some place. Okay, but definitely a lot of mulch on just. Turn yeah, it's slippery when wet. So and you your oh, you're no so, Yeah, yeah. So, okay. yeah. You're doing whatever I'm dealing with. Doing with your views. Yeah. Some, some some you're putting it in the parking lot. A lot of times, either they're not putting it where there's either lawn or anything that's tree lawn, and not where there's exposed soil. Right. And I'm thinking, if that's not gravel, then it is just. No, exposed no, big soil with mulch on it, <laughs> right? Like it, but uh, I didn't know if it was like some kind of impervious under it. Yeah, and there's gravel. Yeah. I don't know for sure, but I'm getting there's oh, gravel. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely gravel all in the mulch. Yeah. Yeah. You see that occasionally. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, it's not all the time, but definitely, definitely when they scrape it down. There's yeah. I think I saw you. Yeah. I, I pulled in real quick today to take a look over there, and I saw the young people up there and I had a few. Like you folks were busy. Yeah, I saw the DOT, and I thought I bet you they're talking about the entrances. And so I just looked over there, and I, I can't see the ground over there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've been there for years. Like I said, you go there a lot sometimes, or at least I do. Yeah. It's pretty close to grass. You get used to it. Probably. Grass out here somewhere. Does the board have any additional questions? What was the That was it for the poll. <laughs> I'd say no. Yeah, it's probably right. together. Thank you for coming, Bill. Oh, okay. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. No, no, it's getting it's getting through there. Yeah, we're right on top of the hill. Okay. So oh, does anyone have close? anything? Oh, go ahead, John. Sorry, nope. I was just asking the public carry can close. Does anyone have anything else they'd like to talk about? Uh, uh this is this is Kat. Sorry, I'm dialed in. Hi. I couldn't see the map. Were you saying that the patio area is going where all of the outdoor plants currently are? Yeah, correct. Where all the plants were, which would be to the west of the building. Correct. That okay. Plant. Okay. Um, I just wanted to comment. I'm also an avid DR struck shopper. Um, I know that that area gets pretty soggy, but that might be more indicative of because they're watering their plants versus their filtration. But as you're planning your patio, I just wanted to throw that in as a heads up that I recognize that's often a very kind of squishy part of the property when you go looking for plants. So best of luck. I'm excited. Good night. Thank you for your report. So we have to go through that one list. I, I'm going to make a recommendation that what Greg outlined. So I, I will leave something off. Uh, all right. So if you'd like to try that, and we'll, now, now would be a good time to start. But if I word it right, if I don't, then throw so something at me. Yeah, go ahead. Are we able to approve I'm, this without the DOT permit? 
I you, Mark can't right. issue the building permit. We should be able to issue a conditional use permit if I'm correct. Right. You could make it a condition. Right. I mean, generally, it, something like that would be, yeah, you I mean, would get that in hand before. Because that's not something that we have that would impact our decision. <laughs> because we're not voting on whether it's actually, we're voting on if the business is allowable because it's a conditional use. Right. So we're voting on the use of the property, not on meeting all of the statutes because we don't have the parking plan, we don't have the access, we don't have anything that Mark would need to do for the code enforcement permit. Once we have site plan regulations, then we'll have some kind of view, but I believe we oh, currently. Okay, I was gonna say currently, I don't think we have the next workshop. Yeah, yes. maybe, I was gonna say currently, we don't We don't have that authority, so it's just right. voting on if we can, if for the business use itself. Does anyone, um, I want to put any other conditions. So the condition really is, um, you know, I don't have public. The, all the building, all all town ordinances that are required yeah, yeah. for building and construction are it's met. Us. And that's what I said. I, yeah, I don't think we even need a condition. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's that's right. a requirement of Yeah, that passes with it, doesn't it? Yeah, a lot of times, and I will probably propose at some point some standard conditions, which are some things that are the obvious building to the most casual observers. But until, yeah, yeah, but sometimes it's still good to document it because you would be surprised how many people afterwards they say, oh, we didn't know we had to do that. So oh, I think you could practice at some point to get some so standard you can put it just so people understand what they're yeah. getting into, so yeah. to speak. Because those, are, those papers are not fun to make, to make out. And people do get confused. So the easier we can make it, the better off they are and we are, I believe. So does anyone want to? Thanks. Well, I got two. Wrong wrong button. Button. And I got three. <laughs> well, I got addresses there. Okay. Right. Right. I, I was I was gonna first make a motion that um we're going to attest that we've all read the 14 point um ordinance and and the applicants responses to those ordinance and we don't have any need to further investigate any of those items agreed <laughs> so so that was my motion okay um, second i'll second that all in favor opposed Anyone else? so and then we basically we've approved your plan you need to do the things so that was just a motion for a 14 point. Oh, now I'm going to make sorry. another motion. Sorry, I know it's getting late. I'm going to make another motion that case number 23 24 03 2215 US Route 202 Federation of the request for a conditional use permit to establish a restaurant in an existing commercial building in a limited commercial zone. Thomas Quinn Jr. Uh, map 009 lot 59. Uh, be approved with the condition that uh, all town ordinances will be met before the building in permit is issued. I'll second that. That was very good. Thank you. Um, all approved. I'll just go this way. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. They didn't know how long they were going to be sitting there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, when do you think you're going to start work? Something relatively soon. Um, I don't know. I mean, even, even though the bank loan is in motion, we really didn't go too far because this was the most well, yeah, point, yeah. and DOT. And yeah, so, I could say you got DOT. So, so happy Valentine's yeah. Day to us because we got them both figured out on the same Good day. But well, it's and, day and days with us going there and starting early tomorrow. We just need to get the approval for it. Yeah, you got to get Mark. So you and, say you well, get Mark parked. already talked to us. He gave me the form for the virtuous, which I cannot pronounce that it's word, it's license. It's just... And he told me, because I think, I don't know if we need a building permit, but I know we need a plumbing permit. Yeah. Yeah. We might need a building permit for the little vestibule. Yeah. Um, and I think he gave me another paper, but I can't remember. I have them all in my <laughs> folder, but... And your D, not related to us, but your DHF license and your alcohol license just transfer over. It won't amendment. transfer. They'll come. They'll have to come and inspect. Yeah. So the next thing would be to get them out there, not right away. Right. But, we can get it all set up. We can all inspect it. Do the thing. 
And then I think that we need to take for the for the liquor license, we need to fill it out and the town has to. Oh yeah. Sign off the town on it, I because I yeah. every time I do my liquor license now, I every every year I renew it, I take it to the town office, the selectmen sign off on it, and then I send it to the state. So I'm assuming it's yeah, probably it's the, the same, same, the same council, thing. Council, 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 council. Yeah. Yeah. And all I do is drop it off before a meeting and then they put it on their agenda and yeah, and I moved it over to a one to the morning, close to 10 o'clock, and they got that headache right. So it won't be a one, it won't be like one in the morning. It won't be a bar. It won't be a bar. You may have a drink with you. I was thinking, <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a family, what we have now is a family style restaurant with a bar, and we plan to continue the family style restaurant with the bar. We do plan on having like a partial wall by the bar, just so it's kind of separate, but it's not. Yeah, that's good. Our noise always yeah, is it's... important to extend to everything but the industrial, right? Limited commercials in the noise ordinance, not just residential, I think. Mm -hmm. We have a specific noise ordinance. We do our bread and at 6 a.m. to, I want to say, 10 p.m. I believe it is 10. Yeah. Because if we do a, if we do music in the patio in the summer, it wouldn't be old. Yeah, I'm just saying it may apply. We're so old. So I, we I know it doesn't do apply, <laughs> but it may apply. <laughs> it's not super recent. <laughs> just the, yeah. I was just going yeah. to say, yeah. say white duck yeah. plate music. Yeah. 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 In, it wouldn't be those hard, heavy metal rock bands that are so loud you can't hear yourself free. No. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think it's sounding like that. They have to be new. Not okay. Yeah. 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 The zoning map, the council has not uh, done anything with the zoning map yet. They don't have to have a public hearing or officially adopt it, but we want to have them recognized so the town clerk can certify it, the digital map that you all worked on. Exactly. Um, I'd like to add the groundwater protection zone to the map. So it seems like the time to, to put it in before, before we look at it officially. So I'd like to do that and have you look at it before the council looks at it. So I just wanted to flag that. You may ask you for some input on that. Um, so that would be forthcoming. We have two applications for the next agenda. One is for outdoor display and storage for a business, um, <clears throat> excuse me, on Old Lewiston Road. And the other one is a shoreline permit. So there'll be room on that agenda. So, you know, maybe we could start looking at some of the um, workshop items. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to send you a little email, you know, asking you to look at a few things, but, you know, the, we talked about the policies and procedures a little bit, the public hearing, um, you know, guide. Um, What's what was the first one? Is that a new business? No, it's an existing. Um, it's an existing business. It's Roy, the council of Roy. I'm going to forget his last name. Up on Lewiston Road, he has. The, it came to the planning board. Um, it's his property, but there was a company that made floats in it. They manufactured floats and they sold oh, them. Oh, that was a picture yeah. table. Yeah, floats. he has a. That's a business that we issued a conditional use permit for yes. him. He's in the rural zone, yeah. and in the rural zone, you have to come to the planning board to get permitted for a business. Oh, yeah. So if he wants to add signage or change the business, he has to come back to get a new conditional use. Permit. That's why I was just wondering why. Yeah. Why are we seeing this? So that would yeah, be why is because he's in the rural zone. Yeah. Correct. It's a it's a yeah. paddle wheel floating picnic table kind okay. of thing. Oh yeah, yeah. they're public. Okay. So what he, he had a picture. Lawnmowers, repair, and sales. So it's not not going to be as fun. Yeah. <laughs> but so that's on the agenda, and then a shoreline permit that that's um, it's in the actually in the water supply district, and so it's quite far from. It's within a thousand feet, but it's quite far from the shore. It's not. Oh. It's not a super complicated one. Um, so what I'd like to do is just send you a few bullet items and things that we talked about in the workshop, and see if you can kind of hone down what what we might be able to address that evening. Um, I don't want to quite be unreasonable again. <laughs> look at too much. Yeah, that's not a good idea. Pick a few and say we'll pick a few yeah. and probably pick a time. Yeah, and say let's try to wrap by nine thirty or something, and that way we have two I, different. I think that is in the goal. Book. 
But the I was always so, and then trying is it ends at nine and you're supposed to get out of here by nine. It's it kind suggests, of fence that. Well, it says it says by nine we should address right. how long we should state how long the meeting is going to go. It shouldn't be any more than nine thirty. Yeah. Well, I think it was kind of open. Like it recommended nine thirty. No, I put in nine thirty. <laughs> perfectly fine. I got no problem with that. Yes. I got no problem with that. And that's that's that was a year. That was a I have not presented you with minutes for a very long time, so I've got them almost completed, and I will give them to you with the next set of information. And we need to um, get caught up in a bunch of minutes and then stay. That's not the worst time. job in the world. <laughs> it's not the the minutes. Oh, don't you think it's? I it's know it's easy, easy, but I'll tell you what. But I need to go back and reference them. Oh, I think they're good to have. I just don't like doing them because yeah. what happens is I can't read my own writing because I'm trying to write back. I wrote. Well, I got a little tiny keyboard to go in my phone house and I just oh, you do the you use the computer. Yeah, yeah, I can check it way faster. So I just want to kind of just throw that out there. There's a couple of items on the next agenda, but hopefully we can incorporate some of the workshop stuff too. Yeah, we're gonna when are you on vacation for uh seven I'll be I'll be gone that's what it's be gone for twenty eighth and to what? A journal because it's like oh yeah we gotta sign this thing anyway. Yeah, just probably all right the meeting would will join. Join. Yeah, we're gonna adjourn. Does everybody agree to that? Yeah, I agree. Okay, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> um, we talked about just updating. Oh, some of the yeah.